We all know that filmy cinematic look that all filmmakers are after. Hollywood has been doing it since the beginning, setting the tone for movies today whether it was shot on film or not. And surprisingly, movies are still being shot on film like Inception, Dunkirk, Nope, Jurassic World, and tons more making the expectation of the cinematic look aspects you would see from real film stock. But nowadays we're fortunate enough to shoot on digital cameras like RED, ARRI, and Sony where we can choose to keep aspects of film we like and get rid of other aspects we don't after we shoot it. And today, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're obviously gonna be using the Dehancer plugin for DaVinci Resolve. Uh, they were kind enough to send me over their OFX 7, which is in beta right now. So it's a little finicky at times, but um, it's their newest one, a bunch of new tools in it. And they did send it over to me, but I am not obligated to say anything in particular. So this is gonna be a 100% honest review and look at it. The price is going up from 400 to $450, but once you buy it, you have it forever. So that's pretty cool. And if you like to answer after this video and you wanna grab it yourself, you can use my code for a little discount to help you out there. So jumping right into the first clip with the black magic, we have to answer up here on one node. That's all we need right now. And uh, the it's basically just up here in the effects panel and you just have all these tabs to go through and you can enable them or, or you know, not enable them. And they have tons of stuff for you to do, which is really cool. So starting with the first one, we have input, um, the source, I just go down to choose camera and you can set it to whatever camera you're shooting with. So for this one, it was the Blackmagic 6K and I shot in film gen five ISO 400, which is the dual native ISO, it's 400 and 3200. So I was in 400. And then you just have like your basic kind of um, like correction sliders here. So uh, exposure and temperature, just warm it up a bit and um, tint and all that stuff. So uh, after that, we have this other tab, film developer. Um, I typically don't use this. I haven't seen much need for it for myself, um, but it's got a couple of things here you can do. And I just leave that uh, not enabled. Um, the one we want though is film. So this is where you have all your film stocks that you can emulate. Basically, they've got literally so many of them. Um, just honestly sit here and go through all of them, see what looks good. Um, for this one, I know that the uh, Fuji Chrome Velvia 100 is pretty cool. Oh yeah, you have to enable it for it to, for it to show up. <laughs> um, so just kind of look at the colors and kind of what it does. Don't worry about lighting too much. We're gonna fix that. We're gonna go down to this expand tab here and the black point, we're just gonna bring up. Uh, in other words, we're gonna make darker. We're gonna bring the black point down. I don't like to go too far in the blacks cause it is supposed to be filmy. Um, and then I bring the white point up and just, just enough to bring it a little bit of brightness to it. There we go, so that's before and after. So already getting a pretty decent look here. If I show you completely raw and then to where we are, it's not bad. So next thing we have is this print tab. Um, I use it sometimes. I would say with a film stock profile, it does not look very good. So if I go in here, you have all these options here, uh, like Kodak 2383, which I usually love and that's pretty much all I do. If I select that and enable it, you can see how punchy it makes it. and you know, you can fix that and tweak it. However, I just leave it off for this one. I don't need it. Um, we'll be adjusting a few things later. So moving on, you have this tab color head. Um, at first it seemed very overwhelming and didn't make a lot of sense to me, but it's super powerful to kind of push your color grade into a stylistic way. So we'll go ahead and enable that. And the first thing you have is the, these first three up here. So you just, move the slider towards uh, whatever side you want. So I love to do like a more green push cause I'm, I'm going for a 2383 kind of, you know, greenish look here. So I'll do like four to the green and then I'll just give it a green wash over it. So that's before and that's after. And then after that, we come down to film grains where you start stylizing it to be more filmy. You enable that and they have these profiles already preset for you or you can go to custom. I prefer going to custom and I'm just going for, you know, something. Let's zoom in here a little bit. I'm just going for like a, a fairly grainy, but not like, you know, nasty and muddled. Uh, film resolution just makes it a little bit more crisp. I give your size an amount. Um, and then the shadows that'll kind of like make it a little bit more grainy in the shadows there. Um, and then that's all I'm gonna mess with. So 
that's before grain, that's after. So just enough to give it like that pop of that filmy look. Then we have halation. And halation is the um, kind of like that red fringing you get from film uh, in bright areas on the edges of things. So when I enable this here, you'll see it kind of adjust the image to like a red hue, uh, which we'll fix in a second. But you see on his shoulder and stuff that it's um, a little bit red right there. That's the halation. Uh, they have these profiles here already set of what you would naturally get like in 35 millimeter film and stuff. Um, again, I'm gonna go to custom because when I turned it on, you noticed that there's a global diffusion of this fringing. So I like to bring that down so it doesn't affect the color of my whole image. Yeah, you've got your source limiter here at the top and if you put that up, it'll affect less of the image and then to the left, it will affect more of the image. Um, and you have a mask mode here where it'll kind of show you on your screen what edges it's affecting. So that's really helpful. Um, mess around with those settings to what you like and it's all, you know, preference. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. We get to pick and choose, you know, the aspects of film that we love and we want to keep and if we want to push it even further. Um, you can pick a certain film stock, but like have, you know, a ton of halation, which you might not actually get from that stock. So it's really cool that we get to pick and choose what we want here. All right, so moving on here, we have Bloom. This is what everyone's after. It's that like kind of glow you get from the highlights, um, you know, with those filters you can put on your lenses and whatnot. So we enable that. And you can see that it applied the profile of a 35 millimeter, super 35, um, which looks great already. You know, that's before it's after real nice and subtle, which I'm always after a subtle kind of changes here that add up, but we're going to go to custom. And we're going to push it a little bit further. Again, you have your source limiter to what it'll affect. So to the left, it'll affect a little bit more. And then you have your diffusion and your amplify is gonna be how intense that is. So you can see there in his armpit in the window, it's pretty subtle. I mean, they don't overdo it. Like that's all the way up, it's all the way down. So I'll push it pretty far. I'll, I'll make this real filmy here. Um, you can save your lights there, which is all the way up. You wanna keep that in saturation. And then impact down here, you can also put that up and you can see how you know glowy it gets here. So we're gonna keep that at 50 though. We don't wanna overdo it. And um, that's, that's Bloom, um, definitely one of my favorite things in here. Uh, and then down here, I don't use it too often unless I'm going for like an authentic, like broken down film from like 16 millimeter, eight millimeter, that kind of stuff. Now 35 has it too, um, but I'm not going for that kind of filmy look, right? Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take you through these uh, tabs here and just show you what is possible. And some of these are new in the beta, so once it comes out, you guys can um, you'll have this in, in the plugin. So first up is film damage. Again, you enable it and you just have these preset profiles and the custom is up there if you want to customize it. And that just kind of has your, uh, typical overlays you would kind of put on there. So you have like your dust and your hair your scratches, uh, damage that happens to film that's been sitting around for a while. All right. So moving on, we have film breath is the next one. This is in film when you have an unintentional shift in exposure from frame to frame. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know what causes it, <laughs> but it's when you look at an old film and it kind of like flickers in exposure, like actual full on just like how bright the whole image is. Um, that is film breath. And so you can add that in and get that kind of old projector, like film uh, projector, like look you can get from that. Um, so that's what film breath is. Uh, the next thing we have is gate weave which is in a actual projector that you play film in, it is when it kind of sways in the mechanical um, thing that guides the film basically. It's the natural kind of sway you have. Um, that's what that gate weave is. So that's pretty cool. And then after that, we have uh, just your vignetting. Um, and then down here we have, for the monitor tab is more for um, clipping indication. You can see where it's clipping in your image, but then false color, this is super cool you can overlay a false color and it actually will tell you where uh, in the IRE that you are clipping and where your exposure is at. So it's super helpful, um, especially as you start getting real heavy on that film look. So um, that's really fun. I'm glad they have that in there. It's a, it's a good tool to have. Uh, and then you have your output tab, which is your total impact, which is just um, how much every single tab together is gonna be showing up. So you can see I can kind of control it here. Um, but we'll just leave that at 100. 
and then we have the LUT generator tab, which is where you can export LUTs. You have your small 17 by uh, three, and then you have your 33 by three uh, normal size LUTs. But um, yeah, you can make your own LUTs and uh, have your kind of like presets uh, from Dehancer. So super cool. And then down here, you just have options of quality. I uh, just do it on normal fast typically. Um, and then that's basically it. So this is where we got with just using the Dehancer plugin. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off this node and back on. So it's not bad. So this is what we're working with just straight out of the, uh, the plugin itself. Now I told you I'm not going to stop there because there's a lot more you can do, uh, in DaVinci and really in Premiere or anywhere else. At this point, I'm just going to adjust some skin tones some uh, adjustments on exposure and lighting, and then uh, we'll be done. So what I'll do first is right click on that node, go to add node, add serial before. We're gonna rename this one skin, and you wanna put skin node at the front, so that way you can utilize all of that data before it runs through that Dehancer node. Um, I'm gonna hit option S here to add another serial node. I'm gonna label that adjustment so first things first we'll go into the skin node here and we're going to go down to our qualifier and i'm just going to select her skin tones over here because i put that green wash over the whole image um skin tones are going to be running a little bit yellow so i want to add some more magenta back into them to make them look uh, more natural so i'm going to go up here and turn on my mask view i'm going to close this up i'm going to find their skin tones I'm gonna close the lighting, the luminance tab up. And then we're gonna clean it up, gonna clean black over here. We're gonna clean white. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of blur radius to it just to give it a nice feather. That's pretty good. And we'll look at our vector scope here, which is on our skin line. You can tell it's a little bit below. So like I said, it's running a little bit yellow. We're gonna to go to our curves and we're gonna go over to hue versus hue. And I'm just gonna click on her skin tones again. And then I'm just gonna open up these two points. Make it a little bit wider to affect more. I'm gonna turn off this mask view. And I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit until they look a little bit more natural. So there you go. If I look, go back to our vector scope, the, um, you can see the exposure is right on that skin line where before it was a little bit below. So I'll show you before it and after it. If you watch her skin tones there, you can really tell that we did some 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 work there. So that's before and that's after. So it doesn't affect the whole image, just her skin tones, brings a little life back into it, uh, but the whole image has that green wash over it. So we just look at that 2383 kind of like filmy look on it. Then we'll go over to the, the adjustment node. And here I'm really just cleaning up uh, with full control uh, in our primaries here, just exposure, contrast, things like that. And then one last thing I like to add, we're gonna add, we're gonna option S here for a serial node and I'm gonna label this one saturation. And this is a quick saturation tip for you. If you wanna have really good saturation in your image, don't don't come down here and, and, and use this saturation. Uh, make a node, you're gonna right click, you're gonna go to color space, you're gonna go to HSV then you're going to right click again, go to channels. You're going to uh, click off channel one and channel three. This is like the most common practice for saturation and resolve. It's, it's amazing to it, what it does. And at this point, nothing's happened. We haven't done anything. Okay. We just selected what channels and color space. Now we're going to come down to our primaries and in gain, we're going to bring it up to like 1.011. Sure. And you can see, it is way more contrasty, but the contrast doesn't affect any kind of luminance or anything like that or exposure. And it, the color depth that it has is so much more than any kind of saturation tab that you're gonna affect. So I'm gonna click off that node and then back on. And you can see the depth of color, like his skin tones and his hands here. Man, it's like so much deeper. So um, that's awesome, awesome way to do contrast or uh, saturation, sorry. And the Dehancer tab, I just don't think they have like an effective way to affect the saturation of the whole image. They have, you know, saturation here, like in, oh, that's some blue, I'm sorry. Up at the top here, they have um, ways where you can kind of 
mess with color density and stuff like that, but it looks very fake and just like it affects the luminance of it. So um, this is this is kind of the complete look here. Um, we've got a filmy looking image. Um, it kind of, you know, really holds up to how I would color grade anything else. We're just using this plugin. And I think where it shines is the halation and bloom. I think it's awesome. And the film grain, it's, it's a lot better than the built-in film grain, grain in Resolve and any kind of overlays you would use. Um, so I think uh, this looks great. And uh, yeah, let's take a look.